Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. I want us to focus in on the 10th verse here of the second chapter. Uh, we Christians often focus in and memorize verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And a lot of focus is on those two verses. But i like for us to look at this verse that's often overlooked just because it has verse 8 and 9 before it. And see what we can find here and look at God's good work, what I call God's good work. First truth I see here is that God does a work in us. God does a work in us. Verse 10, for we are His workmanship. So then I ask the question, who is the we? That's referred to. Well, verse 8 and 9 told us. He's talking about people who are saved. Those who have been saved. What do you mean saved? Saved from the penalty of sin. The judgment of God. Saved from the power of sin. God is working in us right now to control us so that sin doesn't control us. He's working on us. And He saves us ultimately one of these days from the presence of sin, we're going to heaven. So it's talking about we who have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior and come to know Him as personal Savior. Uh, so it's those who are saved. We, saved through faith in Jesus Christ, you've trusted, you've turned and trusted Jesus Christ, uh, we're justified by faith. Through faith, we're justified before God. Saved without trusting any of our own works or goodness at all. Knowing we're not good. Verse 9 said it, not by works of righteousness which we have done. All of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Isaiah 64, 6. That is our very best is as filthy rags. Why? It's just like Jan's mentioned this morning. You can be, you, you, somebody else might look at you and say something, but what about inside of you? Stuff that we have in us. Our motive. Why we do what we do. Even sometimes. Uh, is ill or evil. It can be. So, he's talking about those who are not that are saved, that are not trusting themselves or their goodness to get to heaven. We are His workmanship. What's it say? God does a work in us. Doesn't He? We're His workmanship. It's that word, uh, poema. It is the word from which we get our English word poem. And that particular word, it's uh, used back in first century of a poet writing. It can be a poet writing. It can also be an artist who's painting. It's used, that word is used. So in other words, what God's done is He's done a, a work on us. He's worked in us. He's making a masterpiece of us. He is, uh, as it were, creating a work of art in you. And so, he's taken this terrible piece of canvas and changed it. 
and stirred her to work to make it beautiful. That's what happened when you got saved. But look what he started with. Look up in the first verse of the second chapter there. There's this whole listing of what God had to work with. And it tells what we were before we met the Lord and before we got saved and before he did this work in us. It says, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. You were dead in trespasses and sin. You were spiritually dead. You were soiled by sin. Things that offend God. That's what we were. And then it goes on to say, wherein in time past, you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. You had devilish influence in your life. You were defiled. Walking according to the course. You were directionless. Wrong direction. Going according to the course of this world. The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. We, you were disobedient before you met Christ. And then among whom also we all had our conversation, manner of living in time past, in the lust of our flesh, desires, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, wrong desires, deserving judgment, all of that. That's what God started with. The master artist. We were the canvas. And we were an absolutely terrible piece of canvas. And yet, He started working on us. And He did something. And He said, That unworthy thing I'm going to make it mine. <laughs> and then he starts making something beautiful. Huh? That's what he did. Look at verse number 4. You can read right through there and see it. But God, the terrible canvas, but God, who is rich in mercy for his Great love wherewith he loved us even when we were yet dead in sins. Hath quickened us together with Christ by grace. Ye are saved. He's quickened you, made you alive. He gave you new heart desire that you didn't have before. He cleansed you and made things fresh in your heart. Clean. Sensed your dirtiness. But then cleanness came by the blood of Christ. God did it. A work. We are His workmanship. And He raised us up together, made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us. And for by grace you're saved through faith that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works. Right? It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any should boast. For we are His workmanship. Then it says we're created. It is the word, katizo, created, God created. It's the same word that was used in first century Greek language to talk about the Old Testament, bara, God creating in Genesis 1. And God, how did God create? Six days, He just spoke. And something came into existence that had never been in existence before. You can't do that. You can take what God's made and put it something together, chemicals together, that He's already created and create, come up with something. But you're not creating anything. God took nothing and created something. That's the idea here. God took, well, we were nothing, but we're close to it. And, and, and he took that nothingness and he created something he said, that's everything that was a negative and he made it a positive. God can make us his workmanship and create something. He can do it. He's God. With humans it's not possible. Humans might have been doing the best they could do with Janet. 
oh yeah, you believe this, you believe that, something else, and might have been sincere and all of those kind of things and concerned about her eternity, back in kids' camp, all of that kind of stuff. But I don't care. It's what's in the heart. And it takes a work of God in us. In us. And so that, that's why it, it's not disturbing to me whenever somebody, uh, Larry Cowick, so I've been in church. Larry Cowick met with me for uh, a year, maybe two years. I don't remember. Every morning before he went to work, we met right there and we prayed in this front pew. Didn't we, Larry Cowick? Met and prayed, met and prayed. He good help and everything and whatever's going on in the church. And then lo and behold, we had a revival meeting. Bill Chapman preached. He fell under conviction and got born again. I don't know his heart. I didn't know his heart. He's been praying all that time. But I don't know nothing about it. All I know is that it takes God for people to get into the family of God. And that doesn't matter whether they're seven years old or 70 years old. You say, so could somebody get saved at seven? Let me tell you this much. A sovereign God can do what He wants with a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old or a ten-year-old or a fifty-year-old. He, You hear me? I know. I'm, I'm already getting... I'm a, rocks are going to throw at me here in a minute. I don't care. You're talking about God doing the work in a heart. I know somebody has to under, get some understanding of the gospel. I, anyway, I'm, I'm going down wrong paths here. God does a work in us. Right? We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus. What happens? I'll tell you what happens. Somebody that winds up getting saved later after they've already made a profession of faith, they cast off on people who have made a profession of faith before and say they couldn't ever got saved the first time. That's not true. And we need to be careful that we don't just have that as a categorization. Well, they didn't... They never... They never shot dope like I did. They were never drunk like I was. Well, it doesn't make any difference. God can let them know they're sinners and Jesus is the Savior and put the pull on them where they want Him real in their lives and heart and know they need to be cleansed by Him. God does a work in us. The Master did a work on us. We're His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Created in Christ Jesus. You know, created. God created something. It's not referring to physical creation. It's referring to spiritual recreation. That takes place in a person. Not physical. Spiritual. The, all of that verse 10 points to a time when we were worked on by God. When God created something new in you. When God created something new of you. You hear me? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore if any man be in Christ, he's a new man, woman, boy, or girl new creature in Christ Jesus. New creature. Galatians chapter 6. Listen to this passage. Verse number 15. It says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but a new creature. That's what matters. Did God do something new in you? Not circumcision. The Old Testament covenant sign, you know. Here's the ceremony you're supposed to go through. If you claim to be of God's people. New Testament covenant sign. Water baptism. Isn't it? That's the sign of the covenant. New covenant. 
water baptism. That's the commission we've got on us as the church. Go into all the world, baptize in the name of the Father. That's the commission. But you know what? We're told, now be certain, mere ceremony doesn't make you a new creature. You'll have to become a new creature. So you're eligible for the ceremony. If you didn't get become a new creature before, I, I promise you dipping you in some water isn't going to make you a new creature. It's a work of God in us. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus. I would hasten to say that we are new creatures, a new person, a new you. You are a new you. When you got saved, you were a new you. Now that doesn't mean that you're perfect, flawless you. You were not. Just let me talk to your family and I'll figure that out pretty quick. But you know what? The love of God was shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost which is in you. And there is a new love for God and a new desire to please Jesus Christ and a new desire to worship the true and living God. New in you. <laughs> right? Jan, Jan no longer came just because Sharon <laughs> was here. <laughs> uh, she came because she wanted to. <laughs> mm. You become something on the in someone on the inside that you were not before. And then this new creation is in Christ Jesus, it says, which simply means there's no other place or person you can find salvation. There's no other place or person you can find regeneration. There's no other place or person that you can go to that you can get what will change in your heart. Oh, it's in baptism? Nope. Oh, it's in church attendance? Nope. It's in giving financially? Nope. It's in good morals? It's helping your neighbor? Nope. It's in Christ Jesus. You have to come to Him. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. Oh, so, number one, God work does a work in us. Number two, God plans work for us. It says in verse 10, For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained. God plans work for us. He saved you. God worked in you. Why? He's planned some works for for you to do. He has good works for you to do. You are saved to do good works. And then there's that added information for us that God prepared beforehand some things for you to do. Child of God. Three words here. There's the word works. Ergon. Energy, word we get energized, energetic, all. It involves us uh, committed, commitment. It has to do with sweat and perspiration and effort. It requires something of us, doesn't it? It works, plural, not just one thing one kind of good work it's it's more than that right you're not saved by it but it's the result of salvation God gets in your heart and does a work in you and then once he work it does a work in you he says you know what for I even saved you 
I already had a plan for some things that you've got to do. I'm fulfilling my plan and I'm going to use you to fulfill my plan. That's what he says. Works. Then there's the adjective to describe the works. Good works. Agathos. It's good works. Works that are good. What are works that are good? It's works that are godly. What are works that are good? It's work that God has assigned us to do. Works that promote the saving work of Jesus Christ. That's the work we're about. What are some good works? Let me read a, a few. To you. Titus 2 7. In all things show thyself a pattern of good works. Child of God, that's God's word to us. He's got good works for us. He's got works for you to do that are good works. What, what are those good works? Well, he gives a list of some of them. And you might be surprised about what God calls good works. Like take for instance, he talks about older men being godly. Being a husband. Being a father. What do you mean? That's not spiritual. Oh yeah. It is. It's a God appointed pre-planned appointment. If you're a father, it's a pre-planned appointment for you to be a father. <laughs> and then it goes on to talk about the older women. They're responsible to teach the younger women what's the ways of God and all. But not on that. Uh, uh, um, older mothers are described here. You, you know, if you've got a baby, well, I know one of the pre-planned works God gave me. Right? I'm responsible to train them, teach them the ways of God, raise them up and all those kind of things. Show them what's right. Tell them what's right. Teach them. Younger women, younger men, employees, employers. All, we've got a whole list of things that are called good works in there. Titus 2.14 said, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of what? Good works. God plans for his children he he's just taken us to heaven otherwise. But he didn't. He had good works for us to do. Uh, some of the good works are, are to being morally pure. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Renewing your mind continually with the word of God. Reading the word of God. You know that, that it's the good work that God's got for you. For you to make sure that you keep a biblical mind that is transformed by the word of God. Have a real prayer life. There's a good work. Have an intercessory prayer life. Praying for those at the house of God here. Praying for the unsaved. Praying for people you know in their families that need to come to God. Praying. Uh, what's a good work? Be willing to suffer and be unpopular for Christ. Tell the gospel. Of Jesus Christ together. There's the good work God's given to us. Repent of any known sin in your life. All these new practices. You didn't used to do that stuff before you were saved. Not sincerely, genuinely. You didn't carry the real burden of the gospel. And the need for people to get saved. Before. Then there's a third word here. It's, 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 it says that it was before ordained. Works which God hath before ordained. God has prepared ahead of time. God has prepared works for you in advance. What's that tell me? I'll tell you one of the things that it tells me. That God foreordains things. He does. What, what, Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. 
Revelation 13. You know what? It was already in the plan of God. Do you know before God made Adam and Eve, Jesus is already pre-planned to die at the cross? You say, I don't know about that. Let me give you a verse or two. How about it? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 19 and 20 uh, says, Jesus Christ, the precious, will redeem with the precious blood of Christ and of the Lamb without spot and blemish, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times. I'm, I'm glad God's so big that He's seeing everything from eternal perspective. We're just in time. But He already knows. He said He knows the end from the beginning. Isaiah chapter 46. The end from the beginning. And He said, you can count on it. I, we can read the passages, I won't. But you can count on it. My plan's going to come to pass. what he said give you a couple more passages 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 no no that's not it 2 Timothy 1 9 says uh, God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. See, we've got God narrowed down. Oh, yeah, man messed it up in Genesis chapter number 3. And you know, after that, God had to adjust. <laughs> Not so. You're talking unbiblically. We're talking about the God on the throne who before the world began did stuff. And he's foreordained stuff. You say, well, I don't like that kind of God. Then just throw your Bible out and quit worshiping the true and living God and go ahead and worship some other God you want to make up. God foreordains things. God prepared ahead of time. It, when we understand that, you know what that is? We, God prepared a, ahead of time a work for you to do there's the general work for all believers that's written in scripture whatever thou shalt thou shalt not God gives directives God gives imperatives God tells us what we ought to do what we shouldn't do how, how we're to live all the, all the things God gives us and tells us well you're supposed to do those things that's good work God's got for us but having said that I joy to know that there's a specific work for us. And I'm thrilled to know, uh, for my part, it's been 37 years that God has had a prepared work. And the prepared work was for little Kenny Sanders from South Jacksonville, Illinois, for him to come and pastor in Meridoshi, Illinois for 37 years and preach the gospel. That, and God foreordained that. I don't know that. I'm, you, you, you're not waiting. You're not sitting around waiting on God. Oh yeah, God will make it all happen. No, 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 no. That's not it at all. But you know what I am doing? I'm looking back and saying, huh, Look at what God foreordained. God foreordained for this people for decades to be gospel light in this little river rat town and this ends of the earth. And it's been God's plan for you to give and missions and gospel have gone out across the globe. 
God's plan. God pre-planned it for you. And I look back, and you look back, and you say, yep, sure enough. Judy Gant for de decades is going to be sitting there. You know, right? And I can name every one of you. You just, here you, here you are. What's God's plan been? Well, this is what God's plan's been. For you to come and worship Him, pray together, share burdens, get around the Word of God so we can learn it together, so that we can strive to live holy and be an example and tell the gospel to this community. And wherever you work, wherever you go to school, your neighbors, it's been the plan of God. Right? Yeah. God prepared ahead of time a work for you to do. Look back and just realize that all of that's part of the plan of God. Thirdly, God produces work through us. Really, verse 10 concludes by focusing on our responsibility to find God's will and then do it. We're to find God's will for our, our lives and then do it. God saved us. Did a work in us. And then pre-planned to work for us. And now, we must take steps of faith and obedience. We must be active. Because the verse concludes that we should walk in them. What? Walk in those God-ordained good works. Right? Good works that God's ordained. We're not to be just spectators. We're to be participators. We're, we're, we're not to set only. We're to serve. God's called us to serve Him in life, in our families. What if we do? Do it all to the glory of God. At work. So we must know the work God has for us to do and then step out and do it. What kind of work has God got for you to do? Well, we learn that through the Word of God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. What? that the man of God may be fit for good works. Does it say good works in there? Yeah. Every good work. God's got good work for us. How do we know? We get full of the Word of God so that we can know the way of God and then we'll trust the power of God. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Philippians 4.13 and then we can make preparations for God. Listen to this Timothy passage. If a man therefore purge himself from these things, things that God doesn't want in your life, then he's sanctified and fit for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. God's got good works for you. You know what he's doing? He's trying to get, he's working on me, he's working on you. To prepare us so we can do good works. So we need to make preparation. And then don't quit. Stay at it. Uh, Brother Bagwell's life verse is uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know 
that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Abound in the work of the Lord. Our life should be centered in the work of the Lord. Let me give you a couple more passages. I can't, I can't leave them. Titus. Chapter 3, verse 8 and verse number 14. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. That's certainly a warning passage. Tell us that we can slough off and somehow miss the good works God's got for us. Uh, and then verse 14, and let ours also learn to maintain good works, it says. So, don't quit. Stay at it. Conclusive questions here, examining questions. Are you his workmanship? Have you been recreated? Has God made something new of you? And then, has God done a work in you? And then do you understand God has a plan for you and your future? God's got a plan for you. What, what work does God have for you to do? What's God wanting you to do? What's God been speaking to your heart about that you need to do? The most important work we do is to tell of the work that Jesus Christ did at the cross. Most important work you'll do is to tell of the work that Jesus Christ did at the cross. Because he died for our sins so that we could be forgiven, so that we could be changed, so that we could be made new and become new creatures in Christ Jesus. Let's stand. God's good work. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The Lord didn't just pitch the old canvas off into the trash. But he said, no, I'm going to make this mine. And I'm going to start working on it and making it something new. Have you ever been made new? We're not asking if you've ever been baptized.
Have you ever been forgiven by the Son of God? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is calling knowing you're a sinner. Calling because you want to, not because somebody else is forcing you to. Oh, mom and dad made me pray whenever I was four. No, did you want to? Did you really want to? Did you really know you needed to? That's the problem with young conversions. Sometimes they don't know they're a sinner. And you have to know you're a sinner before you can get saved. Some do. Some know. Our Father, we've made a stab at just this text. Lord, we need you. Lord, we know it takes your work in hearts to make people new. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice the intensity of your work providing a way for us when we couldn't work anything to create what's needed in us. Lord, I pray you'll do that work in us, that work like Jan's talked about, that work that we, probably the majority of this building, have experienced. I pray you're working on hearts. Work in us. Lord, you've got to work for us. Help us to take the responsibility and get at it and walk like you want us to walk in these things. Do real work is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.